Hey everybody, how is it going? Um, I just wanted to um, go over something I found <clears throat> on the nano site. Um, because what I was trying to do on the nano site was um, add buddies and look at their profiles and all this other stuff. But every time I do it, every time I click on anybody, it says 404 page not found with the nano header. So um, I've said it once and I'll say it again. Nano's website is the thing that destroys NaNoWriMo for me and for a lot of people. So um, get on that. Uh, I'm sure it's not freaking hard to um, attach the hyperlink from someone's name or picture to their freaking profile page, Nano. Um, it's really not that hard. Please get on that. Um, if any of you are having troubles with the nano site, please let me know because I really don't want to feel like I'm this um, weird old man who can't seem to make the interwebs work. Um, mm -hmm. Steve Donahue is already that guy. Uh, we don't need another one of those. Am I right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so what I wanted to show you is what I found. Um, if you go to the Nano website, actually I should have had a page pulled up showing you where to find this, but if you go to the Nano Rymo, I think it's .org website, and then go under, I think it's writing tools or something like that, um, there is a thing called the... Um, Nano Prep 101 course. It is a 52 page um, PDF that actually, um, it probably isn't as thorough as what a lot of people on AuthorTube or Hawken for other people and stuff like that, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here. And um, one of the coolest things I found was this in um, session three, construct a detailed plot or outline. That would keep you on track with your story. Um, and then it has this little quiz right here, okay? Um, oh, actually, you can't see my mouse right there. Let me do this. That has this little quiz right here. Yeah, you probably still can't see my mouse. That's all right. So basically, um, there are... You take this quiz, and then it gives you what percentage of which one of these plotting um, structures that they have, and there's five of them that they have on here, um, That which one fits you best. And so I took the little quiz. It was really easy and quick to do. And it turns out, okay, that I am... Uh, I had three things tied for first place. So, um, normally that wouldn't help somebody, but, um, it made me get all nerdy and weird. So as you can see right here, um, the first one is stay loose, jot, bin, and pants. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of cool because this is what I had done for a really long time. Um... I didn't even know this was a way to do it um, that like other people do. So basically, um, you do this, you just write down scenes. Like um, at the examples here is Katniss goes hunting, Katniss volunteers, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm assuming they're um, using Twilight as an example. <laughs> Am I right? All right. Well. Uh, nothing. Um, and then you just take this, and it's unordered, and you could just write in all your mega brainstorm scene ideas. And then once you do that, they're unordered, then you put them into three categories, beginning, middle, and end. <clears throat> and then it even says here, don't throw away any scene ideas just yet, just add them to a maybe not group, um, which is a very smart thing to do. Um... And then you organize them, and then you'll eventually have your grand list of scene ideas um, in order. And this says that you should have like 
probably about 50 to 100 of these scenes. Now, when I first did um, Black Star Canyon, um, which is now called Black Star Murder, but when I originally started writing that, I originally wrote it as a script, um, a television pilot. <clears throat> and what I had done, and what I did with pretty much every screenplay I wrote up until probably 2013, is I would just go to the grocery store, go to Staples, and get a big-ass pack of uh, index cards. And on the plain side, I would just write down every idea I had that was going to go into that story. Um, and usually I would have some, it would be in the middle of the night and I'd have music up really loud and I would be going back and forth between whiskey and coffee, chain smoking, and like just running around my house because I would have them all over the place. Like they would be all over the carpet, all over the table, um, just all over. And any idea I had, I would just write the little thing down. And then on the back, I would like go into more detail on the lined sides. And um, then as I would get farther into it, like once I hit like 60 or 70 or 100 or whatever, I would start just laying them out in order of how they would go. And a lot of times I'd be looking at them and I'd go, okay, I need another one in between these two because these would not fit together like that. So um, that's what I would do and then I would just number them. But this is also a good way to do it. Now what I do, um, as you can see above my head, let me see if that's still above my head. Yeah. I started taking um, the same kind of idea that um, I normally do. And actually, let me move this over so you can see this a little bit better. So here you could actually see my um, virtual index cards in Scrivener. Um, so I basically just write down every idea that I could come up with for it. And normally I try to start, um, in the order that it would go, but then I quickly lose that. So each one of these is a different, um, index card, basically, that is a scene idea. And, um that's that and then I will write like bullet points there is a way to do it where if you click on this and just write in here like no do 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 or something like that oh that's not spelt right it needs to be spelt like that okay there you go um now if I go to the page that is um the introduction scene of the snows I go like that, and there's nothing here. But if I go to this, <clears throat> which you guys can't see, I don't think. Let me try to pull that over a little bit more. Now, um, since I clicked that little blue um, icon right there, the little information thing, this right here. Oh, where'd it go? Okay. Um, it opens up this um, page that I could type on with what I typed on um, the index card. And then I could even go into more detail on notes in here. Now again, this goes back to um, using Scrivener and only using about 8% of what it's capable of doing because um, da, 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 da. I never use this. And I should because it's pretty cool. And then I could even put like pictures in here and all sorts of other stuff. So, like, if I want um, a character to look like um, Zoe when she wakes up, I could snap a picture of Zoe waking up, and then I can put it right here under my notes, and um, then I'll you know. Have to do that with the <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so you could write all sorts of stuff here, um, and then it's not here. What I do a lot of is that I'll write notes of Evernote because I could use Evernote on my phone as well. So I and they sync to each other. 
so I go back and forth like that a lot. Um, and I'm sure there is some way of getting some kind of Scrivener something on your phone. I just haven't messed with that yet. Um, but um, if you go back to just the corkboard style over here. Oh, wait, no. There we go. Um, this doesn't even have the notes that I wrote down here on it. It's just holy holy whoa. So, um, that's that. I came up with, I think there's 40, 39 or 40, um, little things for my, um, uh, plotting for my Preptober stuff. So, um, that's kind of cool. So that's moving along quite a bit. Uh-oh. Wrong one. There we go. So now we're back right over there. <clears throat> um, actually, we probably I'll leave it there. I don't know if we need that anymore. Okay, so anyway, so that's just one of the ideas here um, that you could use. Another one is the plot roller coaster. This is like very um, setup, inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. Um, what I'm trying to do now that I'm looking at these things is do, does everything I have fit into all of these? So can I take this, um, roller coaster thing, even though I'm not using this as what I'm doing and just throw all my stuff in there? This one, obviously you would be able to, it's pretty, um, basic, but then, <coughs> um, then you have your own, you could just do. Um, then we have the I Love Plot, the Nine Step Plot Dot. Now, this is like your hero's journey, um, whatever that dude, um, the community guy, uh, Rick and Morty, like that kind of deal. Um, you can do that one if you like that one. Most people who um, follow any kind of structure, arc structure and stuff like that, um, use, or maybe not use this, but have heard of it. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. The next one, um, this one is Save the Cat, um, three acts and 15 beats. Um, coming from screenwriting before novel writing, um, Save the Cat was what everybody talked about. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take my notes once I'm done with them to see if I could fit this into, um, the story that I have. And I'll go to this next one too. Um, hang on. So I could explain a little bit more. Come on, come on. Okay, here we go. Now this one, <clears throat> I love outlining so much. Katie Tastic, three act nine box twenty seven chapter line. Okay, so this one is pretty um, in depth. Okay, so you have act one, which is the setup; act two, the conflict; act three, the resolution. Then you have um, three blocks in each act, and it's basically this first block is the setup. This second block is the conflict. This third block is the resolution of the first act, which would take us into the second act, which is the conflict. But then we would still have the same three um, deals with all of these things in them. And then blah, blah, blah. So basically, if you follow this structure, and on one of her videos it even says, like, if you do this and your chapters are around... 3,000 words, you would have like a 80-something thousand word um, book at the end of it. Um, so this is a very um, point for point what should be happening. And she has a couple videos about this, and I... Dang it. I, it's not, I don't think it's the one that's clicks that you could click to it here. Um, but there's one that you'll find once you watch this video, there'll be another video that's from a different, um, nano year <clears throat> that she's using a, uh, marker on a whiteboard. And that one, I think 
explains all of what she's talking about a little bit better. Um, but it that might just be a me thing, and you might be better with the one that's on here. But I'm really interested in taking the story that I've already started plotting out and um, playing with, and then bringing it in to this setup to see <clears throat> what I'm missing or maybe what I have too much of. Now, this book I'm doing does have multiple POVs in it um, with multiple... Um, I don't want to say journeys or quests or whatever like that, but that's almost kind of like what it is. Um, and then when you look over here on Act 3 in the third block at Chapter 24 where it's like Converge, I'm like, oh, that must be when all my characters would end up meeting up. And I'm like, wait a second. Maybe that's not how this goes. But anyway, so I'm wondering if um, all of these things should be for each character or if if I was doing it this way if I should have um all of these same beats hit for each character and I'm going to go back up to the save the cat one um as well and look at if that's how that would go with my multiple characters as well so um it almost makes me wish I was doing something that was just a single character point of view. Um, but, like, I don't have anything in my head right now that I want to write that's a single character point of view. So I kind of screwed the pooch on that one. So we'll see how that is. But um, And so that's the last one on here, I think. That was five, right? Yeah, now we're getting into building strong characters. They must work out quite a bit. Um, and then there's these other things here at the bottom. Um, when you begin to plan your project, start small. That's a really cool blog post. It's a really short blog post. But it's like, start with a sentence. Now go to three sentences. Go to a paragraph. Go to three paragraphs. And it like says kind of what to do on each thing. It's just a good exercise, even if you don't want to do it like that. And then... Um, the subway map thing, um, not going to lie, I don't know if I was just burnt out on all of the um, different kinds of plotting you can do, but this, I was like, okay, I've had enough. I'm done. Um, put a fork in me. That's that. Um, so anyway, so check out Katie Tastic's videos on this. If you just like type in Katie Tastic Preptober... Um, all of this stuff will pop up. She's been doing Nano from what it looks like every year since like at least 2012, maybe like even before that. So um, she probably has um, a ton of stuff that I haven't even looked at yet. But um, so that's pretty cool. So what kind of um, what kind of plot structuring do you do? Do you do any of these? Do you do something completely different? Um, it's just weird because for the longest time when I wrote stuff, I just sat and wrote stuff. Um, and I didn't worry about all this stuff because I, I feel like I've like at least subconsciously have understood this has to happen in the first part of the book. This is the middle. This is the end kind of thing. Um, I've always kind of just been a storyteller kind of thing. So um, getting into stuff like this is always really interesting and exciting to me. Um, but I also don't want to get overwhelmed by um, this. And I don't want to just start focusing on this so much that I completely, um, by the time I'm done, just don't even want to write it. Because I'm like, dude, I put more work into just building a plot structure outline than I've ever put into writing a book, so I'm done. Um, so there's a little bit of fear in that for me, but, um, like, one of these things that 
I know I don't do just looking um, right here. Um, again, you probably can't see my mouse, but on Act 2 Conflict, you're in the new world now, and then there's this fun in games part where you start um, enjoying this new place you're in, and then go to the old juxtaposition of how it would maybe remind you of where you've come from and wh how far you've gone, and um, make it almost kind of somber or super exciting, I don't know. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, I might have, but not consciously do that. Um, out of all the things in at least the Katie Tastic plotting thing, <clears throat> that bit is something that I don't think I've ever done. So, um, and that, the whole reason why I was even thinking about doing what I've been talking about doing is because I saw that and I was like, crap, I don't think I've ever done that. So it makes me want to really dissect how I put stories together to see how many other things I don't do. Or if there are things that I do that I do multiple times. Like, um, like just out of, as an example, like number 21, The Darkest Moment. Like, I'm thinking of stuff I've written. I could think of maybe... Um, three or four places where I thought this was the darkest moment. And then like some other stuff happens and then we're like, wait, this is the darkest moment. And then like a couple other chapters go and you're like, ah, fucking damn it. This one here, this is the darkest one. I promise no more dark moments. This is the dark one here. Um, so it's just, it's curious. So, um, this week I'm going to be playing around with all this stuff and kind of just see what I come up with. But again, let me know down below which one of these you use or if you use something completely different. If you have tried any of these and they just don't work for you, let me know. Um, and then take that test. It's like it's like seriously like a five question <clears throat> quiz like pick an animal that you look like or something like that. I don't know. Um, it's kind of interesting. So anyway... Um, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.